Hello and welcome to Telecom Weekly, your flagship program on ICT. Telecom Weekly aims at educating, informing and updating you with the latest trends, issues, news and developments in the telecom and ICT sectors, particularly in Nigeria. The program is brought to you by the Telecom Regulator, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. I am your host, Uluwa Tobi Eneto. Once again, welcome. In this week's edition, NCC hosts regional roundtable to discuss clean energy for powering the telecom sector. Telecom regulator to partner with relevant agencies to promote ICT growth. NCC restricts commitment to telecom subscribers database. Please don't go away as we bring you these stories for your viewing pleasure. On NCC Telecom Weekly, we bring you innovations, trends, policies, and stakeholders redefining all sectors of our economy today. Here, you will see the actors, policy makers, and creativity that will shape your mind and businesses for growth in line with today's reality. Join us every Monday on NTA Network, 10 p.m., and every Friday on Radio Nigeria, FRCN Network, 8 p.m. NCC, Connecting Nigeria. Following the successful maiden edition in 2022, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, is pleased to invite the general public to the 2023 edition of the Nigerian Telecommunications Indigenous Content Expo, NTICE. The NTICE is Nigeria's largest indigenous telecoms, tech and startup manufacturing and innovative event, organized annually by the Commission's Nigeria Office for Developing the Indigenous Telecom Sector, NODITS. This year's edition promises to be extraordinary with an agenda that will inspire and place indigenous technological advancement at the forefront of national development. Theme, harnessing indigenous content for economic growth, networking to boost investment. The NTICE 2023 is a three-day event scheduled to be held at the Landmark Event Center, Lagos, from the 22nd to the 24th of August, 2023. Registration is now open. Register at www.ntice.ncc.gov.ng. Attendance is free. However, registration is mandatory and is open until 20th August, 2023. Nigerian Telecommunication Indigenous Content, NTICE Expo 2023. Be there. NCC, connecting Nigeria. Refocusing academic research towards alternative clean energy, panacea to paucity of energy in the telecom sector, was the theme of the 2023 Regional Roundtable with the academia and industry stakeholders organized by the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. At the event, Professor Omar Garwadambata, the Executive Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, says the Commission is keen on implementing policies that promote the adoption of clean and sustainable energy for powering the telecommunications industry. The telecommunications sector is forecast to keep growing as technology continues to evolve with innovation at a fast pace. This growth will require diversification of the resources of energy for powering the sector in a manner that saves cost and guarantees environmental sustainability. It is considering this development that the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, convened the 2023 Regional Roundtable with academia and industry stakeholders to refocus academic research on alternative sources of cleaner energy to power the telecom industry. The events which took place in Lagos had the theme refocusing academic research towards alternative clean energy, panacea to paucity of energy in the telecom sector. Professor Umaru Garuba Dambata, the Executive Vice Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, told the roundtable that the Commission is keen on implementing policies that promote the adoption of clean and sustainable energy. According to him, this will help to reduce the industry's carbon footprint as well as provide a framework for telecom service providers to contribute to a greener future, foster innovation and create new business opportunities within the industry. The Executive Vice Chairman, who was represented at the event by Engineer Ubali Maska, the Executive Commissioner of Technical Services at the NCC, says the Commission supports academic 
academic research in renewable energy sources such as solar, wind and biomass, which can efficiently power telecommunications infrastructure. This regional roundtable is thoughtfully structured to engage in insightful panel discussions that will deepen the contributions of all participants. That the four panel discussions, the first is uh, exploring various clean energy sources to improve energy efficiency. This discussion will delve into the diverse clean energy options available and how they can be harnessed to optimize energy efficiency in the telecom sector. The 2023 roundtable comes on the heels of the success of last year's event, which showcased marketable prototypes developed by Academia. Experts who made presentation at the roundtable pointed out pathways, challenges of alternative energy sources, and implementation strategies for the telecom sector. Some other policies also include policies that are enabling for deployment of solar systems to off-grid communities, policies that are able to allow developers like myself to be able to have better um, implementations of, um, of our projects in, in, in such communities so that at the end of the day to also help the telecommunications because these telecommunications um, equipment, most of, some of them are in the rural locations too, they are in the last mile communities and the CAPEX and also OPEX, the operational expenses that is being um, used to operate other alternative source of energy like the fossil fuel generators is very, very high. So we require policies that gives us soft landings in those cases. Meanwhile, Professor Wahab Egbewole, Vice Chancellor, University of Illinois, says funding is a major challenge that is slowing down research. Another participant at the roundtable, Mrs. Kudira Temitokwe, commended the NCC, saying the event came at the right time. We should not leave this roundtable and go to sleep. It should be a constant engagement between the three elects, industry, government and the academia because that is the only way we can actually attain the goal that we want to uh, uh, attain as a country. Well, I think this is very commendable for NCC to put this together, an engagement among major stakeholders, the academia and other stakeholders. In a chat with the media, engineer Ubali Maska speaks on how the industry will benefit from the round table. We are all aware now that the cost of electricity is high. If you have a generator, the cost of fueling it is equally high. So it makes sense for the Commission to now refocus research towards renewable energy. And there is no better stakeholder to partner with than academia because these are people who live on, 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 on doing research. Uh, the Commission is hoping to refocus interest in this direction uh, because clearly success in this will certainly make uh, telecom services more uh, affordable and sustainable for I mean that will eventually lead to general uh, improvement in all aspects of our, of our lives. Panelists are the events celebrated on various issues including policy framework, cost, financing and the need to address other concerns in the industry. During the open season, participants made inputs on the next steps to take to address the challenge of power supply including the use of renewable energy. We always think that technology can be important. I should imagine that all of us are mindful of the fact that Technology first should be indigenous. My phone, I have respected it so much. But I have, for whatever reason, it seems now to be malfunctioning. Then it dawns on me that the makers of this phone, this phone was not made in Nigeria. They would have built into it that in the next two years or so of this man using it, this phone should die and it must be compelled to buy it from us. And that's something that I see very routinely. In our laboratories, we know there are panels, there are panels. People that are into this room know what they call crystalline solar cells. When you take crystalline solar cells, when they say 15 years, even you can run it for 20 years, it won't go down to power outputs. 
Then when we talk about batteries, there are conditions for batteries. There are elements, there are, there are types of batteries. So when you buy a battery, when they give you guarantee, 10 years, it stays 10 years, not just buy a new kind of battery. So these things must be tested. At the end of the event, Participants identified the need to explore the interface created from the roundtable to increase collaboration between academia and the industry with a view to getting their research findings commercialized. The roundtable further agreed on awareness creation among stakeholders, consideration for funding and finance options, and community involvement with standardization and harmonization of government policies. It was equally resolved that a database should be created where operators can have access to research output done by Nigerian universities around renewable energy. On its part, the NCC will request all existing research outcomes on renewable energy from academics to avoid duplication of efforts. The coming of Information and Communication Technology ICT graduating into Internet of Things is seen as a panacea to sustainable economic development and social advancement. As part of its mandate, the telecom regulator has continued to promote universal access. This came to the fore when a delegation from the Nigerian Youth League paid a courtesy visit to the corporate headquarters of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. The Nigerian Communications Commission has re-emphasized the importance it attaches to strategic collaboration and partnership with relevant stakeholders towards fostering ICT for sustainable economic development and social advancement. This was brought to the fore when a delegation from the Nigerian Youth League, a non-governmental organization dedicated to the promotion of peace and unity in the country, paid a courtesy visit to the corporate head office of the commission in Abuja. Receiving the delegation on behalf of Professor Umar Ugarubadambata, the Executive Vice Chairman, NCC Mrs. Nena Ukoha, Head, Corporate Communications of the Commission, reiterated the high premium NCC places on issues bordering on collaboration and partnership, especially as it pertains to the Nigerian youth. The Nigerian Communications Commission, we are open to collaboration, to such sustaining organization like yours and uh, it's, it's not just going to start with you we've been collaborating with so many organizations and the issue about youths are very very dear it's very very close to the heart of the commission just about a few months ago the commission entire empowered 2500 youths under the program of digital job creation for youths. This particular program, we gather youths from across the country. We bring them, teach them for about six weeks. Then we give them, the, the commission will now empower them with computers loaded with various forms of programs at which at the end of the day a person will be self-employed that person will you know rediscover him or herself earlier mohammedu awal director of program nandran youth league said the visit was to solicit collaboration and partnership with the ncc to support its corporate commission of advocating for good governance we believe uh the ncc is one of us i said the pivot one of the pivots of our uh, the driving force of the economy of the country because it has been the communication sector. You know, the past administration has been focused on the issue of digital economy and ensuring when you are talking about digital economy, we know that the country is really on the right track. When you're talking about when you want to boost the digital economy, you know that the NCC is one of the, 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 the stop point where you believe will ensure sustainability of the, the uh, digital economy. So as Nigeria Youth League, as part of our effort to also um, embrace what the administration is going, also go in line with our mission and vision. So we decide to highlight uh, the NCC and also looking at the NCC entirely, we use our CCTV and binocular cameras also to ensure that we pinpoint a certain individual that we believe would be a gateway to, to, so that we can have a familiarity between the NCC. Also speaking, Aliyu Suleiman, 
leader of the delegation and national secretary of the Youth League, ruled out some of the activities of the group, which comprised the promotion of peace and unity in the country, advocacy against drug abuse, especially among youths, and the promotion of girl-child education, among others. This organization go ahead in making partnership with NDE, the small and medium scale enterprises, SMEDA, as well as other skill action training centers to at least organize some vocational training whereby youth can have something, what we call, not certificate, but certificate. I can proudly say that we are product of uh, this uh, vocational training because we want to lead by example. We started by ourselves, where during uh, Dr. Duke Kwaratna, the current governor of Kaisana State, when he was the head of uh, small and medium scale enterprises, we carried out a vocational training across almost 22 states of the Federation, and uh, youth were trained on uh, on basic skills like art and graphic, soap, shoemaking, soap making, sewing, and other craft, all in order to be self-reliant. High point of the visit was the conferment of Icon of Diligent Service Award of Mr. Bruben Morka, Director of Public Affairs NCC for the diligence with which he had carried out his duties in his capacity as the Commission's spokesperson. Receiving the award on behalf of the Director of Public Affairs, Mrs. Okoha thanked the visitor for the recognition and assured them of NCC's support in the indicated areas of collaboration. Thank you for that recognition. Thank you for giving him that credence of a worthy ambassador of the public service. And we thank you for recognizing his competence, his performance, and his enthusiasm and uh, sagacity in the discharge of his uh, duties and his position we salute you the ncc team that received the visiting nigerian youth league delegation included mrs nafisa ruga head digital media mr abdul isiaka head protocol ncc among others The program is telecom weekly sponsored by the nigerian communications commission ncc Stay with us as we now take a short break. The attention of the Nigerian Communications Commission has been drawn to some misleading comments on the social media which falsely claimed that Mafab Communications, one of the companies granted 5G licenses by the Nigerian Communications Commission, is yet to roll out the service nearly two years after obtaining license and one year after the rollout date. For a fact, Mafab Communications is one of the two successful companies that won a 5G license during the globally acclaimed transparent 5G G auction conducted by the Commission on December 13, 2021. Upon fulfilling the condition of payment of the fee of 273.6 million US dollars in February 2022, the company formally received the license on February 22, 2022. Consequent upon the issuance of the 5G license and in line with the rollout conditions, Mafab publicly launched its services in Abuja on January 24, 2023, and in Lagos on January 20. 6th, 2023. At the launch, the services were targeted at six cities Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Enugu, Kano, and Kaduna. The Commission has continued to monitor the progress of the rollout by MAFAB and have been regularly briefed about the status of infrastructure deployment for service offering as conditioned in its operating license. The public and all stakeholders should ignore the false and misleading information concerning 5G rollout by MAFAB. We are delighted to know you are still there with us. In a bid to enhance more inclusivity of telecom consumers, the telecom regulator NCC says it remains committed to protecting subscribers' database in line with its mandate. The assertion was in response to the false claim made by some telemarketers who claim the commission gives them access to the database. Details in this report. Some telecom consumers have had to deal with telemarketers who randomly called them to make product or business offers. Such consumers are often at a loss at how the telemarketers obtain their phone numbers to place such unwanted calls. I feel it's invasion of privacy. Though I, I see the need for the marketing and all, but getting 
the means of getting uh, subscribers numbers subscribers contacts i feel i don't know the means they go through to get them i think that's invasion of privacy and it's something should be done about them about it sometimes they are actually advertising something that you are not really conversant with something that you might not really need at that particular time so i feel it shouldn't be done that way there are other methods and means by which other um, companies would be able to advertise their products without like getting to contact you personally or directly because sometimes on my phone i'll just see some adverts some uh, some information that i sometimes there are ones you will click it becomes a problem to you you if you don't have my contact you cannot send me a message De definitely you are getting my contact from a source. I wonder where they could get my number, except in functions that we have attended, I will write our names. Findings reveal that some telemarketers resort to making the false claim that they got the subscribers' phone numbers from the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. However, historically, the commission has maintained that it follows best practices in the handling of subscribers databases we tend to use our mobile phones to do uh, a lot of things online to make money to apply for jobs to find out a thing or two about what's going on worldwide so i guess we had to put numbers and some registrations names and also i guess i don't know but i feel the companies give out the number or i don't know how the number is being gotten but it's being gotten and I don't know why, but I would I would say it's not a nice thing to do because we put these numbers and the names and the registrations we do online on trust. So for our privacy to be actually interrupted, it's it's not healthy or it's not even safe for a person. Well, there are scammers everywhere and we don't know what is happening in this country now. There are, something like that has happened to one of my friends, a male friend that they just came and once sent a text message to him that so, 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 this, if you do this, you gain this. We should just try and unfortunately, he end up in victim. So to me, I'll feel bad, something that I wouldn't like the idea. For instance, at the 88th edition of the Telecom Consumer Parliament, TCP in Abuja, Professor Umar Garubadambata, the Executive Vice Chairman and CEO of the Commission, was very emphatic when he said, it is wrong for telecommunications operators to disclose any identity of subscribers on their network without permission. It's unlawful. If such instances take place, then the subscriber in question can escalate this matter to the NCC and we will investigate and establish whether that is the case and take necessary regulatory measures. We must try to ensure the security and privacy of all subscribers on the telecommunication networks. That is the only way we can instill confidence in subscribers and other Nigerians to patronize telecommunications services. The Commission has further questioned against the unauthorized use of telecom subscribers' phone numbers and other personal information by telemarketers. It drew the attention of the public to the unauthorized activities of telemarketers who illegally assessed the telephone numbers of telecom subscribers for their commercial gains and activities. Even in research, where the government and institutions allow for, there's what is called consent. And consent is an ethical principle that requires the individual to agree to whatever you want to do. So privacy, invasion of privacy in any context is illegal and is uh, immoral. So to that extent, um, I like to discourage the telemarketers or those who engage in such activities and NCC should come hard on them by sanctions. That's the only way they can actually limit or stop it. The disclaimer said these telemarketers also dishonestly claim that they obtained the said consumer phone numbers from the Nigerian Communications Commission or that the commission gave them access to the numbers on the subscriber identity module SIM registration database. However, the commission hereby states the Nigerian Communications Commission NCC does not and will not authorize any person or organization to assess the SIM registration database to be used for commercial or other pecuniary gains. 
the Nigerian Communications Commission continues to live up to its expectation in ensuring effective protection of consumers' seen database for proper safeguarding of their privacy. The public is hereby warned to be wary and vigilant to avoid falling victim to the ploys of telemarketers who fraudulently send messages to their phones to lure them into making some economic decision or entering into some commercial agreements while fraudulently leveraging the commission's identity for credibility. Telemarketers involved in harvesting telecom subscribers' phone numbers and other personal details through dishonest means and using search for commercial purposes without authorization are strongly warned to desist from this legal practice as anyone found guilty shall be arrested or prosecuted accordingly. Telecom consumers are reminded to activate the Do Not Disturb DND short code introduced by the NCC to manage a subscription to value-added services with the option to stop unsolicited text messages and other telemarketing offers. This can be done by sending STOP to 2442 short code for full DND. Following the successful maiden edition in 2022, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, is pleased to invite the general public to the 2023 edition of the Nigerian Telecommunications Indigenous Content Expo, NTICE. The NTICE is Nigeria's largest indigenous telecoms, tech and startup manufacturing and innovative event, organized annually by the Commission's Nigeria Office for Developing the Indigenous Telecom Sector, NODITS. This year's edition promises to be extraordinary with an agenda that will inspire and place indigenous technological advancement at the forefront of national development. Theme, harnessing indigenous content for economic growth, networking to boost investment. The NTICE 2023 is a three-day event scheduled to be held at the Landmark Event Center, Lagos, from the 22nd to the 24th of August, 2023. Registration is now open. Register at www.ntice.ncc.gov.ng. Attendance is free. However, registration is mandatory and is open until 20th August, 2023. Nigerian Telecommunication Indigenous Content, NTICE Expo 2023. Be there. NCC, connecting Nigeria. This is the much we can take on this week's episode of Telecom Weekly. But before we go, don't forget you can always be a part of this program by joining us via multiple social media platforms. For inquiries on this program, you can send a mail to telecomweekly at ncc.gov.ng. For further details about the activities of the Commission, feel free to visit our website www.ncc.gov.ng. Telecom Weekly is brought to you by the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. Until we come your way again next week, I am your host, Oluwatobi Eneita, saying bye for now.